As a kid, I was really shy. When I was outside of my house, yeah? So anytime we would go out, I didn't, you know, act up. But when I was in my room, you know, I created a, you know, my own little world in my room and I was in front of the mirror, singing with a brush and, you know, in front of my face and, you know, just being who I wanted to be. There was a little boy who took my class and he was so outwardly comfortable with who he was that I wish I was like that when I was his age, yeah? It took me a long time to feel comfortable in my skin. My dance training started really young. My first class when I was a kid was tap dancing and then a boys movement class and then it went into modern. In junior high school, I was in the dance department and they just taught, you know, just kind of like jazz. It wasn't really structured. Mm -hmm. And then in high school, it was ballet, modern, musical theater, flamenco, jazz, all that. My parents were very, you know, supportive. They supported my dancing and they supported me releasing my energy through that interpretation, right? So that way I can express myself and feel comfortable within myself. It was my dad who took me to buy my ballet slippers for, you know, for school. And he took me to my audition for, you know, the high school performing arts. I mean, he knew at that point that because I was dancing for so long, this has now turned into something serious. And he needs, and he wanted to be supportive or else he would, I think he felt he would lose me, you know? I discovered the ball scene in high school through friends. Some of my friends who were older were into the ball scene and they were like, you should come sometime. And when I came into the ball scene, yeah, I, ha I had all this dance training and I was already voguing when I got to the balls. Yeah, because we were practicing, you know, uh -huh. After school, during school, like we were already like hanging out with each other and after school we would just kind of hang out and vogue and practice vogue and but that wasn't my first category when I started walking balls. My first category was butch queen and drag. So I was getting up in drag uh -huh. and you know trying to win a tro trying to win that trophy. And then voguing came a little bit later. Jose was already an extravaganza and he was like you should be an extravaganza. We were you know, you have to, you know, you should walk and get a trophy so that way you can be an extravaganza. And so me and my friend Joseph were like, we want to, you know, we want to do this. And so we asked and they were like, well, you got to win a trophy first, but you just can't be an extravaganza just like that because you think you're cute. They took me into their family and it was exactly that. And once in the family, I was, you know, protected and nurtured and looked after. I had a, I was very, and I'm still very fortunate to have my own personal ally within this community, with this, within this life journey and career, and that's my sister Mika. When I started dancing for Madonna and I was here in Los Angeles rehearsing for like two or three months, I brought her out here with me. Jose and Luis comparten todo con Madonna. El éxito, la pantalla, y sí, hasta la cama. Luis es puertorriqueño de Nueva York. Tiene 21 años. Nos contará 
todas las locuras que suceden en un tour de Madonna cuando las cámaras no están filmando. Además de ser vital en el show de Madonna, es uno de sus amigos más cercanos con quien sale a discotecas y pasan largas jornadas entre hoteles, camerinos y en la propia casa de ella. Hablaremos de todo eso y de sus carreras como bailarines y cantantes que la misma Madonna está patrocinando. When I was on tour with Madonna, we, uh, one of our stops was Chicago, so I flew my dad and my sister in to Chicago so they could just be with me. He has family in Chicago, so it was nice to have him come and then have his family come to, or our family, to the show and stuff like that. And, um, And I met one of my uncles that day for the first time. And I think, I don't know who was more surprised, the uncle or me. <laughs> I think I was more surprised. Only because when he opened the door, my uncle had long hair, like longish hair. Um, his nails were a little long. And, and there was just this look in his eye. And I was like, oh. You're like, I mean, you're not like me, but you are of an alternative lifestyle mm -hmm. as well, like I lead. Mm -hmm. And he was, um, you know, come to find out from my dad at that point that, you know, he used to be, you know, fabulous when he was, uh, when he was younger, which it put me and my dad's relationship more into perspective. Whereas when I was younger, my dad was a little bit more strict with me on how I just acted and stuff like that. And then later how he was supportive in the fact that I wasn't going to change and I was who I was. And so I think that kind of emulated his relationship with his brother, who was a little bit more fabulous, you know, than the other kids. Um, and so, you know, it kind of mirrored that, you know, like, oh, he doesn't want this person to be this way, but because he is that way and their family, that he is going to support them either way. So I think that was really interesting to see. Ustedes fueron los que le enseñaron a Madonna a bailar y a hacer el Vogue, ¿cierto? Sí, cierto. Ok, tengo un nombre que es la... Casa de la Extravagancia, House of Extravaganza. ¿Qué es eso? Esos son un grupo de muchachos que se la pasan, el, el, viven en la, en la noche, en los clubs, andando por la calle de noche. Eh, siempre se concentran en vestir, en fashion y en el Vogue. So, with the House of Extravaganza, we were going to Japan and also across the U.S., just voguing and doing special events, opening up clubs, and we also danced at, in the windows of Barney's at one point. My drag name still is Tatiana Extravaganza. She's definitely prettier than me. <laughs> She's a little bit more glamorous than uh -huh. I am, right? Mm -hmm. She is, you know, more outgoing. She's definitely a character. And um, she came out of all those beautiful stars that I used to see back in, you know, in the day. Iris Chacon and like, Wonder Woman, but definitely Edis Chacong. I mean, she was a huge, huge influence for me. So Tatiana, you know, is like Edis Chacong, little baby. And the fabulous Miss New Jersey, Menorah Sequakas. What? Sequakas. Suck, cock, us? That's kind of rude. Tatiana is a charity girl. She loves being of service and dedicating her time to charity. So I bring her out and then she comes to life for, mainly for that because I don't do drag shows. Mm -hmm. um, 
I leave that to the professionals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I work with a charity called Alliance for Housing and Healing. And it distributes not only HIV medicine, but it provides housing for people who are displaced uh, because of HIV. Because, you know, HIV and AIDS is not only a gay disease, right? It's a family disease as well. So we try to put families together and put them in homes, get their parents medication so that way they can thrive and take care of their children and be, you know, successful. I'm also developing a work podcast where we talk to people regarding their lives, their lives journeys and how they work it on an everyday basis that is launching in august and you can follow us on instagram at work podcast at instagram you can also go to workpodcast.com so i have a film on netflix right now called strike a pose a wonderful wonderful movie um, not because I'm in it, but because all my brothers are in it, and it tells you guys what happens after the Blonde Ambition tour. So, you can see Choose or Dare, you can see Strike a Pose, you can come to my work dance class. My name is Lewis, I come from downtown, and I get down and I know it. I mean, I'm very proud to know that I've had an effect on people and I don't take it for granted. It's very humbling and it's an honor to even make one person feel good about themselves. So, you know, it, 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 it fills, you know, it fills me and I honestly don't take any of that for granted and I cherish every person that comes up to me that says that, that they have, uh, had their life changed because of me, or not even because of me, just because of what I've done and what I've represented um, is, an, is an honor, it's a true honor.